I've changed the uh, spindle here in the lathe to one that's a little bit drier and, and something I didn't address just a minute ago on the other part is is drying this stuff if, if you can get it. Uh, cherry is one of the easiest woods there are to dry. It tends to dry with few defects. It doesn't trap water in it like uh, say white oak which is my nemesis on drying. Uh, but now a thick piece like this though it does take a little while to dry it and uh, like this one uh, it's air dried for about three months probably in my shop uh, and it's climate controlled and uh, a pretty good place to dry stuff and once I turn it to a rough shape uh, this one's probably dried for another couple of months and you know, if you've got a, uh, a lot of people have small like uh, dehumidifier kills. I've got one uh, that speeds all this up. Uh, it, the main thing is keep it in a good place. And, and like in your home is a good place. Anywhere where the humidity is usually low, if it's, you know, climate controlled, it usually is uh, a good spot. Uh, to pack it up like in the corner of a basement or something that's damp, uh, it's, it's not going to lose any water. So, so uh, these solid pieces, if you can get them, you know, it, it's a little bit of effort and it takes a little more time, you know, of course, but uh, you can dry them and, and uh, you know, roughing them in like this ahead of time, let them dry some more, uh, you know, pretty good process, worked pretty good for me. So uh, as they dry, uh, this one, and I've already actually rounded this one up just a little bit, but you can see the dark spots right here. What happens is these dry, they dry oval, you know, they, sh they shrink with the rings of the wood so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to run over this and just make sure it's round and that'll help with vibration and then we're going to move down here and bring this down to final size so to start with let's uh, smooth this up just a little bit and uh, get it smoothed out you know where it run a little quieter and I'm just going to use the the bigger gouge for that now, I'm not taking much off here I'm just going to Make sure I'm hitting all the way around. Kind of smooth it up. That's all, all we want to do right now. And you can feel it if there's any bumps. Move this down and we'll catch this end here real quick. Okay, that's, that's good enough. So now we've got it running smooth. Okay, on the turning, and as I've probably already proved, I'm not a real great turner. Uh, I just don't do a whole lot of it. And, uh, but, uh, but I can get by usually, and, and we'll get by on this. But uh, fortunately for me, and, and of course you too, uh, this is a pretty easy turning, uh, pretty simple. Uh, the only part that really is critical is right here where the uh, uh, legs meet the spindle right here. It needs to be straight and it needs to be a uh, cylinder, you know, all the way down. The main thing is straight and flat. And that, that's kind of hard to do in turning a little bit. So uh, to start with on that, I'm going to use a uh, pair of uh, calipers that I have set to 2 and 9 sixteenths. And this will be, uh, of course, on the patterns as well um, that we have, and it'll be available on the uh, website. So uh, let's we'll start with the parting tool. What I'm going to do is make a uh, bring this shoulder down till my calipers just go across, and I know then we're at two and nine sixteenths, and I'm going to do another spot about in the middle and one towards the end, and that'll be kind of a reference to uh, bring the rest of it down to. So, I'm gonna get, you see I'm just letting it ride on the uh, wood there. See, it's just going over. Okay, now we know that those three points are at uh, 
the right diameter for our legs are going to meet. And uh, I said two and nine sixteenths. That's what the original at Hancock is. Uh, two and a half would be fine. You know, it's just sixteenth. It's not much, but uh, but like I said, the main thing we just want it straight. So. So I've got those two, those uh, three reference marks. Now I'm going to just use the uh, gouge again and clean uh, some of this wood off, and then we'll come back with the skew and smooth it up. And as you can see, we can use those marks to to come down to. One place to be very, very careful is not let your gouge get into this shoulder right here. Uh, that would be bad. And if you did accidentally, you could move the uh, shoulder up a little bit, come back with your parting tool, bring it up, and then you could shorten the uh, spindle just a little bit with the parting tool. But the best thing is just try not to make a mistake to begin with if you can. So we've got it pretty close. Now I'm going to come back, and you could use if you don't have a chisel uh, with a straight end, you could just use parting tool right here to take this little bit off right here. So now you can uh, you can see what we've got. We're we're fairly close, but now we're going to finish it up with a skew, and then we'll check it with a straight edge as we go along. And it, it may take a, uh, you know, a couple of tries or check it, and you'll find a little bump somewhere. Uh, that's no big deal, but just, uh, if you're going to fret over any of the turning, this is the part to, uh, to do it on. So we're just going to bring the skew in. smooth this up. You just kind of take your time here, especially if you're me, because I, me and the skew uh, are not the best of friends. So hopefully I won't show you exactly what not to do in this process. As you're turning, you can look over, uh, if you were in my position, look over and you can see the uh, profile of your turning. So just kind of watch and you can kind of see where the humps are. And take all of them off if you can, or that you can see. I've got a little one right here. little bit right here. So now I'm going to turn around, come back the other way, and just touch this end right here. Okay, at that point we're pretty good there. It's a little bit rough, but we're going to check it before we go any farther. And uh, you can, I need a shorter straight edge. Just uh, put your straight edge along there and see uh, where the humps are. And I can tell them a little bit high right up here still. And another thing you may want to check, um, I said we want a, a nice a cylinder. And the biggest thing we want is, of course, it to be straight, but it could taper. It could be smaller here and bigger here. So you can take, come back with your uh, dividers, I mean your uh, calipers, 
and where it just clears right there, see I'm catching here, so I know I'm just a little big here and I'm quite a bit big right up here, so I'm good here. I need to come up and make another little pass right up through here. And be sure to get all the way into that corner. I tend to leave a little hump right there when I, most of the time when I have to go back there. So, so we're gonna check this one more time. In case, we look pretty good right there. And this is pretty smooth right now, uh, coming off that skew, and a good turner doesn't use sandpaper, but uh, I've already explained, I'm not a very good turner, so. Um, and this is this is real close to, in fact, it could probably pass, but I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of 320 right here. And if you notice, I'm moving the tool rest out of the way. Uh, as you're sanding, you know, holding on here with your hand, it's, you know, it can grab. And uh, you wouldn't want to somehow get your fingers down between the work and the uh, tool rest. Very bad. So we're just going to hit this real quick. And so, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good there. So we're going to go with that. Uh, next up, we're not, uh, you notice, of course, we haven't finished this out through here. Um, and we're not going to right now. We're going to go ahead and do our leg joinery uh, where the sliding dovetails come in and uh, all that. And the reason being is we're going to be clamping to the cylinder right here in the vise. And that kind of damages the uh, turning. So if we turned it to final dimension now, uh, we're just going to have to return it and then it's going to be too small. So we're going to leave it a little bit big. We left it rough and we're going to move on to the joinery now. So let's uh, get started on that. 